Um, Mustafa, uh, Professor Mustafa, um, great. Just had a request uh, because I think somebody said that this will be uh, live um, live on on the social media platform. Is it live on Facebook? Sir, it is live on YouTube. Oh, okay, it's live on YouTube. Can you kindly share the link with me? Because I wanted to send it to some friends of mine. Sir, we will if you don't you mind. Now. We will send you now. Okay. On the chat. Okay, thank you. The, thank you very much. On the chat itself, we will send. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Dr. Manash. Good morning, good morning, Professor yeah. uh, Kamal and uh, Professor uh, Islam. Nice uh, meeting good you. Good morning. Yeah. Very good morning. Good morning. Good morning to, yeah. to Professor you. Kuntal is here. Ah, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great, great. Uh, all all are um, uh, known face to me. So um, good morning to everyone. Good morning, madam. Madam is here, I think. Yeah. Good morning. Very good morning to all academicians. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. So, how is there everything in Bangladesh? Yeah, everything is fine, madam. Uh, now the weather is uh, getting better. Mm -hmm. So, between uh, spring and the winter, so it's very pleasant weather now. Okay, very nice. Today in Delhi also, uh, we are a bit relieved from chilly winds, so weather is quite good. So you can see me in half, <laughs> half <laughs> two days back it was very cold, so we were in full uh, coat and all the lead balloons. So all the speakers are here, Madam. Uh, Professor Nozul Islam, who is the Pro Vice Chancellor of uh, Northern University of Bangladesh, and uh, Dr. Manash Panigahi from Simca. You may know him already, and uh, Dr. Kuntal De. Uh, so all the speakers are here. So we can uh, then start at. Uh, very good morning, Professor Sharma. Uh, very good morning. Nice to see you all. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> so, uh, so uh, sir, Sabha, sir, we will start now. Uh, and this program is uh, already uh, participants from Bangladesh and India, many of the participants already joined this program. So uh, now it's up to you uh, start the program. And this program is also live uh, on our social media platform, uh, YouTube, YouTube channel. So. Uh, the, uh, our students also uh, are there. So we can start now. Okay. So dear colleagues, uh, we are just students and the other participants from Bangladesh, India, and the other parts of the world. I welcome all of you to this very important webinar. Hope you all are uh, safe during this COVID-19 crisis. And I wish uh, you, your families, relatives will remain safe in the coming days too. This is uh, Professor Mustafa Jat Kamal from Bangladesh Open University. I'm the Dean of uh, the School of Business here and the coordinator of this Open Business Webinar Series. Just to tell a few words about the School of Business Bangladesh Open University, I must mention that a School of Business uh, is one of the influential faculty at Bangladesh Open University offering a range of graduate programs from MBA to PhD. You know that our Open Business Webinar Series is an ambitious and innovative initiative of the School of Business Bangladesh Open University under the banner of Open Business Talk. It started uh, three years back 
and still is uh, being continued. So we have some face-to-face -face sessions under Open Business Tank, also these webinars. It has been designed uh, for the continuing professional development of the teachers, researchers, and uh, graduate students of Bangladesh Open University and other universities uh, in the areas of research, learning design, OER, e-learning, open education, blended learning, uh, distributed learning, life skills, and value education. The webinars got two main objectives. We try to focus on the important issues related to research and learning. And secondly, we try to help everybody to be productive and empowered. Especially uh, the, the main motto of this open business talk is not only to confine ourselves on the achievements, I mean, uh, education and skills. We rather focus on the empowerment of the citizens. So for empowerment, we need education and skills. We need the accomplishment. We need uh, the mindset change. And also we need the self ability to understanding what self ability. From that point of view, this webinar is very, very important. We have very distinguished uh, experts today in this panel. Uh, so uh, the topic of this webinar is, you know, the life skills and value education for 21st century. So it is uh, rather more important uh, in this situation where uh, this region and all over the world, this pandemic is going on. So what will happen after the pandemic? So before pandemic and uh, within pandemic and after the pandemic, the situation is being changed. Social structures and social relationships, uh, the, the type of the learning, everything is being changed literally. So this webinar is very, very important for that, uh, in that uh, connection. We have uh, three experts in the panel. Uh, you can see that uh, Professor Sharoz Sharma, uh, Honorable Chairman uh, from Indian Institute uh, for Open Schooling. You know that uh, NEOS is a very famous and well-known institute all over the world. And it is an award-winning institute. So they own uh, uh, the Cole Award, uh, I think two times, and very famous. And we uh, usually, uh, whoever uh, the open schooling all over the world is practiced. So NEOS is a kind of uh, example for everybody. So uh, welcome, uh, Professor Sharu Sharma, uh, to this webinar. And uh, we have Professor Nozrul Islam, is the provost chancellor of Northern University of Bangladesh, and we have Dr. Manash Sanjan Panigrahi. He is from Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia, which is called Simca. He is the higher, uh, he is the uh, senior education specialist at Simca, and we also have uh, Professor Kuntal De. He is uh, basically an instructional designer but he is very much involved in uh, uh, community learning and a lot of other uh, areas of expertise he got. So we listen to him uh, very clearly. So to introduce a little bit about, uh, or tell a little bit about Professor Sharma, uh, what I told that she is the honorable chair uh, of National Institute uh, for Open Schooling, uh, he, which is situated in uh, Noida, India. And uh, he got uh, a diverse uh, actual education qualification. I was amazed to see that. She got MS in botany, MA in sociology. She got MA, MBA in human resource management and uh, MPhil and PhD in education. Her specialization uh, primarily uh, is on plant um, pathology, uh, criminology, educational administration and management, and also human resource management. Her fields of interest is curriculum construction in different levels of school and uh, teacher education, innovations in teaching methodologies, peace, gender, environmental education, Indic studies, and defining the significance of ancient Indian sciences in contemporary education, community service, life skills and value education. Madam will uh, speak on uh, life skills and value education today. Uh, what uh, 
should be the life scheme and value education in 21st century context. I will listen to her in detail in her speech. And uh, to tell something about Professor Nozrul Islam, he's a professor of management and uh, uh, management and international business. He's currently serving what I said that uh, as a pro vice chancellor of North, uh, Northern University of Bangladesh. He completed his PhD in international business at uh, Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. He was previously engaged in different academic positions at uh, several uh, public and private universities, including Khulna University, Braik University, North South University, East West University, Eastern University, Uttara University, Canadian University of Bangladesh, and uh, Northern University of Bangladesh. And he also is involved in supervising uh, PhD graduates a PhD scholars and MPhil scholars at uh, Bangladesh University of Professionals. He is a very active member of uh, Association of Management Development Institutions in South Asia, MBSA. You know that it's very famous for uh, uh, management uh, development uh, practices in the South Asian region. He got huge publications. Uh, he got 62 research articles in high index journals, international journals, and also 29 research papers in local uh, peer reviewed journals. He attended uh, several, uh, almost 20 international conferences held in India, Nepal, Hong Kong, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, USA, uh, Australia. He is a, a panel reviewer of South Asian quality assurance system. And in that capacity, Professor Islam reviewed ICFI business school in India for its accreditation recently. Uh, presently, Professor Islam, he is a, a editorial board member of uh, several journals, including International Journal of Management and Business, British Journal of Economics, Management and Trade. He got uh, several books, already he wrote several books on entrepreneurship, uh, modern insurance, and global uh, technological change impact on textile and garments workers in Bangladesh. We'll listen to him uh, in detail when he will speak. And then uh, we have Manash Ranjan Pranigai. Uh, most of you may be uh, you know, uh, uh, familiar with uh, his uh, uh, activities at, at Simca. He's currently a senior education specialist at Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia. You know that uh, uh, this Simca is a sister concern. It's a regional office of Commonwealth of learning is based in New Delhi. So uh, he, in, his, in that capacity, he is very much uh, uh, involved in the works with uh, educational ministries, civil societies and higher education institutions, teacher education institutions of seven countries, Bangladesh, Brunei, India, Malaysia, Pakistan, Singapore, and Sri Lanka for the achievement of learning for sustainable development. In Simca, he is, promoting OER, Open Educational Resources. Today, uh, we'll listen to him uh, how uh, their activities uh, are enhancing uh, our, our awareness and understanding and skills in OER. He also uh, is uh, involved in developing policies for education, implementing higher education integrated model. So uh, this, that model has been uh, 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 design. He was in the process of designing this higher education integrated model. So Commonwealth of Learning is implementing this model all over the world. So especially he's looking after the implement uh, implementation of this model in this region. He was involved uh, in the developing of uh, different MOOCs. And one MOOC is very interesting. It is specifically on life skills. And it is, uh, they are targeting the engineers and uh, other uh, teachers, uh, graduate students also to enhance their life skills. And personally, he was involved in uh, teaching profession and uh, research activities in a lot of uh, universities in uh, Asia, Africa. Uh, and also, uh, he is involved with uh, UNDP, NCRT, IGNO, IMR. And uh, he got uh, experience of supervising more than uh, 70 
postgraduate and PhD research scholars. Dr. Panigrahi has published 48 research articles, conceptual papers, monograms on education in uh, reported national and international journals. And he is also an author of many textbooks and reference books for higher education level. Uh, then uh, if we uh, talk a little uh, bit about Professor Kuntalde, he is basically an in, in, uh, industrial designer. From he got the the in, uh, degree uh, on industrial design from a National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, and he continued his career with uh, some other areas like handicraft sector in India and in few other countries in Indian subcontinent. He slowly uh, was attracted to larger picture of development, growing social issues and concerns, slowly drifted towards non-formal and informal education and technology-aided delivery education for sustainable development. He got a lot of involvement in uh, holistic and contextual learning, contextual learning, uh, and he believed that it can change the world for a better place and address the inequality in the society. He got experience uh, of working with a lot of international organizations, including Commonwealth of Learning, Oxfam, uh, and EAPART, I mean, uh, the Youth Professionals for Agricultural Research and Development, uh, Food and Agricultural uh, uh, Organization, I mean, uh, FAO, and Global Exchange and Leadership Initiative, and a lot of other uh, organizations uh, actually uh, he was involved with. So, so these are the, the few uh, words about them. So before going to the main session, uh, may I request all of the participants uh, to keep yourself muted. During the presentation, we will not take uh, any direct question. So if you have any question during the presentation, put into the chat box. So after the presentation, we will take the questions and we will uh, 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 request the panelists to respond to your questions. So please keep your mics muted uh, throughout the sessions, during, especially during the presentations, and uh, then we'll reach you after the presentations. So now uh, with uh, these few words and a brief introduction about uh, the panelists, uh, I would like to uh, request uh, Professor Sharuz Sharma, the Honorable Chair of uh, NEWS, to uh, deliver her keynote speech. She will focus on learning without border, border, I mean cross-border learning, and uh, she will also focus on how ethics can be established through value education. Very, very important. Uh, so how ethics can be established through value education, and she will focus on moral values, and also she will try to connect these things with SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. So Madam, uh, the floor is yours now. So you can uh, go up to 20 to 30 minutes. So whatever you like. So we'll uh, carefully listen to you. We are waiting for this very valuable lecture from you. Thank you very much, Madam. It's up to you now. Professor Mustafa Azad Kamar. Dean School of Business, Bangladesh Open University, Professor Nazrul Islam, my fellow speaker, and another two fellow speakers, uh, Dr. Manas Ranjan Panigrahi and Professor Kuntal Ding. Uh, Chanchal Ji from our Open School, NIOS, and all the participants, learning party participants, greetings from NIOS. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizing committee on organizing this webinar on such an enchanting topic. This kind of initiatives are rarely needed in today's academic scenario. And as uh, Professor uh, Mustafa said that after pandemic, these kind of initiatives had, uh, are rarely needed to give a proper 
uh, value enrichment and also a kind of conscious enrichment because the pandemic period has become a global concern of late and we have to as educationists and stakeholders of education i think it is a common concern and also common goal to establish such kind of uh, such kind of amity in uh, global scenario uh you have asked me to discuss about values moral values citizenship and also sustainable development goals so yes i was uh, i was just thinking as educationist what are, what kind of role we are playing so i would just like to uh, brief the forum that the organization which i am representing is world's largest open schooling system where students are getting education through online mode and also we have skill development courses and these are more than 100 skill development courses yes we are also uh, educating students and these kind of uh, iti and other skill uh, getting uh, persons in terms of uh, in terms of uh, radio counseling and also television counseling various social media forums are there so we are giving education through different modes non conventional modes of education so these are the three major domains and we are also having several projects we are working in tribal areas we are working for uh, defense personnel we are working for health workers we are training world's largest health worker that is called asha project and also there is one project that is tejaswani this is in uh, tribal areas of jharkhand in india and also i would like to update this forum that uh, we recently we have been uh, able to uh, prepare a course in sign languages so as you said that the kind of mental agony our students are facing these kind of inclusion and development of sign languages i think it will create a change in today's scenario where our youth can uh, come over the agony the kind of mental stress so these are the few aspects which i am discussing and also uh, there are certain courses for beavers and uh, cosmetics beauty there are various skill development courses but somewhere i think that we have clubbed the life skills with livelihood skills life skills are deep uh, i think somewhere deep rooted with personal ethics and livelihood skills there should be a bridge between life skills and livelihood skills and here importance of values and value inculcation comes value of what i belong to the country in fact we all belong to the subcontinent where we talk about survey bhavantu sukhina survey santu niramaya it is a sanskrit code which said everybody should be uh, happy and happiness curriculum is being part of globally of every country's curriculum so that kind of happiness survey santu sukhina survey santu niramaya everybody should be nirogi Uh, everybody should be uh, well being is a concern so this kind of philosophy i think in today's educational scenario we should inculcate in our students and before we talk about some kind of values personal values moral values social values professional values i would also like to quote unesco general commission report in 1996 this commission was published uh, and unesco had a great initiative this report uh, was under chairmanship of uh, dr deller and deller has given emphasis on two kind of streams one was the pillars of education and second was lifelong learning today when we talk about pillars of education i think the sustainable development goals which in today's millennium 2030 goals talk about this deller commission report was basis of this millennium 2030 goal where as a global citizen citizen and also stakeholder of education community we are working towards this report says about learning to know why learning should be to know yeah to get knowledge and also research and ethics also say we also talk about satyam shivam sundaram truth beauty and goodness for the sake of society survey bhavantu sukhina is the basis of this truth beauty and goodness 
we should discover truth and after truth this truth should be for the sake of society and with this truth and beauty the goodness will come in the society this is the core of value system i think and this kind of value system should be inculcated in our society i am discussing about delhi commission report it talks about learning to know why learning should be there why a bipolar system between learner and teacher and the tripolar system where as we said that third pole is society so this bonding the triangle between society student and teacher why we should know to increase our knowledge the metaphysics the cognitive effect the empathy the epistemology why how what these kind of things which come in education philosophy i think it should be the core of learning to know we should know and we should know the real truth behind every cause and effect and then second uh, pillar which the commission talks about learning to do whatever we have learned how we should make this in dynamic process learning to do practical is there and theory is there we have to bridge the gap between theory and practice learning to do and the third most important learning to be why i am learning mera wajood wajood is a urdu word my existence why i am learning what i want to become after learning we are giving many professional in the society engineers doctors businessmen chartered accountants and various professionals we are giving to the society but are they having ethics are they having professional ethics or learning to be this talks about to become something and fourth most important learning to live together why i am learning i and you must have coexistence in society in every arena every sphere and this is learning to live together i may have difference of opinion with you but i am not going to cut your throat so this kind of theory where we have difference of opinion but as human being we have to live together this is learning to live together and after that the delhi commission has talked about many things what kind of education globally should be legal education human rights education value education environmental education peace education gender education so these kind of things which delhi commission has given base and today it came uh, after that millennium 2020 goal there were certain goals and now globally we are discussing millennium 2030 goals where 4.4 talks about education and sustainable development goal in education it is the expansion of this four pillar education i think where peace is there gender is there inclusion is there and also uh, various aspect which we are catering recently uh, in india new education policy has been launched and parliament has given approval also so this new education policy or it is also called national education policy nep 2020 it is also in tune of unesco's millennium 2030 goals which it throws this four pillar education also and our ancient indian wisdom also and also the subcontinent the indian subcontinent and global citizen it talks about learning without border it talks about bridging the gap between learner and the community so these kind of new things we are discussing these days and when we talk about values i also said that there are personal values professional values and here how we should bridge a gap between values and profession personal values and societal values because often if we have addressed many agony i will again quote that our youth is witnessing a very new kind of thing rather we have witnessed in our life span a different kind of this pandemic period where we were locked for many months in our home and this kind of online education it was a concern in india also and i was reading somewhere that it was a global concern especially for 
uh, student uh, with disability, the person uh, with various kind of learning disability, they were also facing problems. Though we were into very much into the teaching and learning process through online board, here value system, family system, societal, how we are useful to the society, these kind of things are uh, here to discuss. Uh, I will uh, ask Chanchalji, just please just um, give the slides so that in a few slides, I would like to give a little detail. I know time limit is there, but in a very brief, I would like to discuss a few things which are directly linked to this. Now we are discussing 21st century education goals, individual and collective well-being. So this is the era where well-being is a concern globally. So in the 21st century, that goal of life has been increasingly defined in terms of well-being. We all know and it is a concern. Well-being involves more than access to material resources. Yes, definitely. Material is secondary. Life is on road, life is on, on four, material should be given secondary part and our youth must be make acquainted about material reality and life along realities such as income and wealth, jobs and earnings and housing. Though these are the necessary requirement of livelihood, but yes, life skills, I think personally that with good life skills and cultivation, livelihood skills, uh, can be also earned through ethics and values. Then also it is related to the quality of life, including health, civic engagement, social connections, education, security, life satisfaction, and the environment. Next slide, please. Then issues and challenges in 21st century when we discuss the uncertainties that we faced in the past and present times and in future years to come. Uh, yes, I would like to quote here that we have to prepare for future times also. This was a big lesson last three, four months, five months were a lesson for us and it made us future prepared also. We are now into many different, um, uh, different kind of medicines and also vaccines for COVID. But yes, we have to prepare our youth mentally. And also we, our medical system, our social system, we have to mentally prepare for that kind of scenario. If another kind of pandemic comes in future, what steps we are going to take, what kind of disaster management we are going to take, and goals and motivation to lead their life will be more than getting a good job and a high income. They have to take care about the well-being of their friends and families, their surroundings, and the planet Earth. Yes, very much. Uh, I think in recent few months, when our children were in our home, we were there with them, a kind of bonding was developed in the family, the home cooked, cooked food and various other things where we were ample time to sit together, discuss about things. This was also a good lesson for us. And then the last point in this slide is to learn coping mechanism to adjust themselves with failures and rejection and to move forward in the face of adversity. This is a very important aspect I want to discuss that we teach our children to be a winner. We always say who has become first in the class, who has become first in the game. But when we talk about uh, uh, willingness to learn, make them learn about failure and rejection, it is also very much important. How to make them competent enough to learn about their failure and also cope up with their rejection. And what is life skill? I would like to quote here. UNICEF says life skill as a behavior change or behavior developed approach designed to address a balance of three areas that is knowledge, attitude, and skills. And also, overall aim of education is modification of behavior. We all know today's aim is modification of behavior. I think these three domains that is knowledge, attitude, and skills define this concept very well. And World Health Organization. Life skills as the abilities to adaptive and positive behavior that enable individuals to deal effectively with the demand and challenge of everyday life. Uh, again, I would like to quote about sustainable goals and emphasis on life skills, which 
UNESCO talks and as different countries of the world, we are also working towards this with the adaption of SDGs, including SDG 4, ensure inclusive and equitable uh, quality educators and promote lifelong learning opportunities and for all in 2015 and the target 4.4 by 2030 there are various goals relevant skills including technical and vocational skills employment decent jobs these are the things which target 4.4 talks about and target 4.7 talks about by 2030 we have to ensure all learners acquire knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development included among others through education for sustainable development a sustainable lifestyle human rights gender equity promotion of a culture of peace and non-violence global citizenship and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development so as i said these were this was the extension of our uh, Dallas Commission report, we talked about four periods of education and also what skills learners require in 21st century. That is, learners require 21st century skills, including life skills for the individual and social welfare and sustainable development. 21st century skills are abilities and attributes that can be taught or learned in order to enhance ways to thinking, learning, working, and living in the world. Yes, here I would also like to critical thinking and living with ethics and ethics through education. There are certain pointers which you can see that uh, this 21st century life skills are mentioned that uh, these are creativity and innovations. Various other things you can read out that is there. And last, I would like to read out life and career skills and personal and social responsibility, including cultural awareness and competence. So when we talk about critical thinking here, I would like to suggest that uh, we teach our students different things, but somewhere when we are giving professional to the society, do we teach engineers to earn money through professional ethics, corruption free society? Do we teach our doctors to be ethically correct? to give their life and soul for the sake of humanity. Yes, there are doctors, there are health workers, they are uh, doing, uh, they are working day and nights. But somewhere, we are also responsible to make a bridge between community and these professionals with ethical correctness. When I say ethical correctness, here comes the value system, which as family, we are giving to our uh, children. As teachers, we are teaching to our students. And as a social person, we are spreading these kind of thinking in society, community and a uh, link between community and teaching fraternity. I think it should come together to develop such kind of initiative to bring value system in the society. And again, I will come to this slide, what skills students require. Students will need to apply their knowledge in unknown and evolving circumstances. This is broadly, these three skills are Cognitive and metacognitive skills, that is critical thinking, creative thinking, learning to learn, self-regulation, social and emotional skills, that is empathy, self-efficacy and collaboration. And last one is practical and physical skills, that is using new ICT devices. So these are the broad things and somewhere I think this is a very uh, formal kind of thing where we are categorizing these things. Uh, but somewhere how these skills can be delivered and developed, we, here we, a greater role of a teacher comes where inclusion and integration of 21C skills, including life skills, teacher training, pedagogy is needed, fostering a culture of peace in classroom, civic education, human rights and developing students' communication skills. These are, are our area where we have to develop a kind of system where it will go naturally in our students and, and the strategy curriculum reform, textbooks, learning, assessments, school environment, overall system management to promote these skills in uh, letter and spirit. So these are the things which we can categorize, but somewhere I think we have a greater responsibility. Uh, please, uh, please remove the slides. I would like to connect them directly. 
So it was a brief presentation, uh, but somewhere I think these kind of uh, these kind of things which we have discussed, a person as the individual of as a member, as a person of human, we have to be a person who can inculcate value in our students. Here again, question will come. Values be taught. I'm of the opinion, yes, tell values be taught because today's youth is very much inclined towards social media, very much inclined towards mobile games, mobile issues, and various other. Yes, he is uh, very well acquainted with the ICT. He is very much uh, a, a person of uh, information technology world. But somewhere information must be in tune of humanity, in tune of uh, personal touch, which we talk about that there is a there should be a bonding between teacher and student. So that kind of bonding, how we can inculcate values in them. This is the question of this forum. We have, I'm happy that this kind of, uh, this uh, topic has been uh, given uh, to me to discuss about. Here I say, yes, I'm a person of the society where I am, uh, I have greater responsibility. I am the torch, be torch bearer of the society, being a teacher. You all are the torch bearer of the society, being a, to uh, being a teacher. So we have greater responsibility to inculcate values. And yes, values can be taught also. If I do something which is ethically correct, if my follower, if my student is witnessing the things, he is looking for things which also follow me. We in NCRT education and also in NRI which try to inculcate values through value systems through physics, value systems through maths, value systems through linguistics. We can give certain examples through curriculum. We can make curriculum that kind uh, of uh, where values are given prime importance and also transactional modalities, how we transact knowledge to our students, how we disseminate knowledge to our students. That is also very much important. So here uh, I stop my uh, presentation and also with a uh, with a hope that we will be able to provide some suggestion to the society regarding value inculcation and also 21st century life skills. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, and I hope we will be able to do bring such kind of change. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Sharu Sharma, uh, Madam. Uh, you you covered a lot of. Uh, uh, shoes uh, uh, in a very short presentation and i personally have been uh, actually uh, impressed to to know all these concepts so uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, take the questions later on and uh, we'll uh, uh, know from you uh, some more suggestions and uh, clarifications uh, wherever required so now i'm going to uh, uh, professor nozrul islam who is the Pro Vice Chancellor of, uh, of uh, Northern University uh, of Bangladesh? Uh, Professor Nozrul, uh, actually, uh, you know, from the keynote, we uh, uh, got an idea about the life skills and the importance of value education, especially in the context of 21st century. So, uh, what is your uh, uh, perception about the current status of life skills and value education in Bangladesh. And also, you can focus on how these are practiced in the teaching learning process in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, another focus can be on the importance of uh, the skills uh, and uh, value education uh, in the context of 21st century, especially uh, post-COVID situation. So you can uh, take uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, to uh, just uh, <coughs> share your uh, experience and uh, ideas. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. So it's thank you very much, <coughs> Professor Razad. Um, I was just listening to the uh, keynote speech of Professor Shoshama, and she covered a lot of uh, things. And it's a broad uh, and challenging issue, in fact. 
it is uh, not only important in, in India or Bangladesh, it is important all over the world in our education system to how to, uh, how to uh, uh, create value through education. We know that the um, Einstein said that education is not the learning of facts, but training of the mind to think. That means how can we train our mind to think? And as educator, or educators, what Professor Shoshama mentioned, that it is the responsibility of the educators to create thinking ability, to train the mind to think of our learners, valued learners. But you know, in, in formal education, this value, uh, 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 creation of value or ethics is, is uh, you know, really uh, difficult. But what Professor Sushama mentioned that, yes, if it is embedded in, in curriculum, or if we can um, include the uh, uh, triangle method, society, student, and teacher, bring these three um, um, actors in one platform, and then they uh, uh, might have a chance to uh, uh, create the value in our education and teaching learning um, method. And you know, the value is nothing but the basic convictions or beliefs where people are fixed. That means, but in our formal education at the tertiary level, we are basically disseminating the, disseminating the facts to the learners. We are not in fact, uh, I should say that uh, able to create uh, impact or create what should I say, thinking among them through our education and in our teaching learning method. So the 21st century, in this 21st century, it, it is the challenge for the teaching community, for the our teachers, how to uh, teach our students in such a way so that they will, um, uh, it will create thinking among them, and that thinking will help them to learn their life, help them to uh, sustain their education. When we talk about uh, the values in edu value education, few things comes to our mind, such as justice, passions, then integrity, hospitality, equivalence, sympathy, honesty, freedom, human rights, fairness, responsibility, respects, a lot of things comes to our mind. But question is whether we are able to um, create this feeling, create this kind of um, thinking among our learners, uh, uh, that, that's the question. And um, I think the issue uh, mentioned by um, uh, uh, the you know, the speaker here today that inclusive and equitable quality education is needed. Inclusive, that means if we can include all the uh, people in this education system, and if we can uh, promote lifelong learning and value-based learning system, then I think we can create value among our, uh, 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 among the learners, among the students. And you know, in uh, South Asia, what do we see? We see our people are highly anchored. That means they are um, basically uh, emotionally driven, emotionally driven. So the question uh, raised nowadays, how to um, um, stable con establish control over this emotion? Because if, if the learner, is emotionally driven, then it will be very difficult for them to establish value among them because they are highly fixed there by their emotion. 
so that uh, you know that in, um, Daniel Goldman in United States he suggested that it is it is it is not only the IQ it is the EQ by E your emotional intelligence that can help uh, ourselves uh, to um, um, uh, to become successful to um, uh, uh, increase value in our learning and you know that uh, what uh, Professor Shushama mentioned that uh, we uh, there are three uh, aspects uh, like cognitive uh, issues, then affective issues and, and psychomotor issues. These three issues are the three domains of learning. That is uh, true. But whether we are uh, able to equally focus on these three issues in our teaching learning process or not, when through our lecture, through our lecture or our uh, discussions, we are basically um, uh, uh, giving them disseminating information, disseminating, increasing their knowledge. And what about the emotion, affective part, that is thinking part? Are we uh, 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 able to um, uh, establish control over their emotion or over the emotion of the learners through our teaching learning methods and through our, this teaching learning process, what we are practicing today. And also, what about the practicing part? That means the psychomotor part. You know that if, if uh, the, the more the practice, the more the uh, uh, stability and emotion will uh, likely be. Therefore, I, I uh, think that at the tertiary level, not only in Bangladesh and South Asian countries, this emotional intelligence issue, that, that means the self-awareness, that means the self-monitoring issue, then self-motivation um, issue, empathy issue, and social skills. These five um, uh, components of emotional intelligence, if you can include this uh, emotional intelligence issue in, our, uh, in the curriculum, I should say at the tertiary level, then uh, perhaps we will be able to uh, provide effective teaching and, and uh, we'll be able to uh, create thinking, um, um, uh, 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 increasing, increasing the thinking among the learners at the tertiary level. And you have asked another question regarding Bangladesh. You know, uh, at the tertiary level, and our, our learners are the matured learners. So at uh, this level, again, I should say that if we can uh, create um, impact through our through the teaching learning process among them, only then this um, uh, creation of value, value we can create value uh, in in uh, in education through our teaching learning process. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nazul Islam, uh, for your uh, very uh, thoughtful uh, uh, talks and uh, the ideas you added. Uh, one is about uh, the emotional intelligence. You focused on that. So uh, we'll listen uh, uh, to you later again if uh, any question comes from the audience. Now I'm moving to uh, Professor uh, Dr. Manash Ranjan Panigrahi. Uh, Dr. Manash, uh, I, uh, can, you, can you focus on uh, something like uh, so what kind of initiatives are taken by SINCA and CORE for promoting life skills and value education in this region? Because you are uh, providing a lot of support, a lot of uh, uh, actually uh, capacity building uh, trainings in this region. What about the focus on life skills and value education? How you uh, deal with this? And uh, what are the target groups? How many people you are uh, trying to reach and uh, whom are being at us now or getting this kind of uh, benefits or trainings? And what is your future plan in enhancing the capacity of the teachers and learners in this region uh, on 21st century skills and open sharing of the resources. 
Uh, so you will get uh, 10 minutes uh, plus minus. So uh, Dr. Manash, uh, the, the floor is uh, over to you now. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Mustafa. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to congratulate you and your team and your university taking this uh, initiative. As I know, this is a continuous process that is uh, you are conducting long back and it will continue in future that is open business talk. And this is, this is really a uh, good initiative and the topic which you have chosen today, this is uh, in time I can say and uh, this, is, this is also give insightful to your learners and your uh, faculties and uh, teacher fraternity in the um, particularly in Bangladesh and beyond. Uh, with these words, uh, um, uh, I would like to um, congratulate Professor Saroj Sarma, Chairperson National Institute of Open Schooling uh, for her uh, new assignment and uh, um, uh, congratulations, Madam, and your nice keynote uh, address, which I have uh, listened, this has covered almost all conceptual level and what exactly targeted in, in India and uh, so forth, uh, connecting with the sustainable development goals, that is, uh, which is the major focus by 30, 30, 2030. So, uh, um, Dr. Najrul Islam, uh, Pro Vice Chancellor of uh, um, uh, Northern University of Bangladesh, and I really uh, happy to connect with you and uh, listening to you, your experiences uh, in this regard. And my co panelist, uh, Professor Kuntal Day, uh, um, uh, indus uh, um, instructional designer and uh, industrial designer for. Uh, um, which is which is I can say that backbone of the content development uh, for uh, um, open and digital learning and open and distance learning particularly. I will be happy to listen to you and I know you are connected with uh, Commonwealth of Learning and Senka and uh, we work together and uh, con your contribution is highly remarkable and uh, um, appreciable. So um, with these words, I would, I would like to just uh, reflect towards the um, collaboration with uh, um, Bangladesh Open University and uh, um, Commonwealth of Learning and uh, SEMCA, which is the um, regional center of uh, Commonwealth of Learning for Asia. And uh, the topic which uh, you are talking about, uh, SEMCA not only just uh, uh, enhancing the capacity, but also reflecting more on that, how to inculcate, how to establish life skills and value education for 21st century learners and the 21st century uh, professionals and 21st century uh, lifelong learners, I can say as well. So um, I, will, I will share a few things uh, which is more important, I am involved with that and uh, I am working last six years um, in this regard to promote um, uh, lifelong learning with special reference to the life skills. So before going to that, I just wanted to reflect uh, on that. What, is, what are life skills actually? What we understand by life skills? It is nothing that this is the abilities for adaptive and positive behavior that enable individuals, everyone, individuals to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of the everyday life. If I will, in a simple word, I can say that they, they are abilities that facilitate the physical, mental, emotional well being of an individual. This is a very simple. And it means every day, every day, every individual with um, respective of any caste, creed, socioeconomic background, anything, we are learning and we are enhancing our life skills. 
that range of anion enhancement may be less, may be more, may be moderate, may be any position. But it is more important, my dear friends, I can just uh, talk about here that uh, two things is very important. One is the adaptiveness and positive behavior. Adaptive means the person is flexible in approach and is able to adjust to different circumstances. Whether it may be the teacher, it may be the learners, it may be the content developers, it may be the uh, any one of us, maybe the parents and the, um, uh, who are the workers working in the different uh, uh, environment and professions. Another one is the positive behavior. Positive behavior, it means that a person is forward looking and that it means very simple to tackling with the problem, tackling to the problem and managing with the problem. You should not believing that uh, the problem is a problem. You need to move into that, understand the problem is the opportunity and you need to overcome that opportunity from your experiences, environments, and you need to make yourself mentally and psychologically prepared to deal with that situation. Commonwealth planning and SEMCA working in this regard very closely and very effectively that is moving towards that. To achieve the life skills, inculcate these life skills, and managing these life skills as per the circumstances you are dealing with. So here I can say one sentence that the role of the teachers and the parents is more important for the life skill is concerned. Because every moment we are uh, broadly categorizing the life skills in two aspects. One is the thinking skills and social skills. While I'm talking about the parents, teachers, and the students, and an organization, we are moving towards the more on the social skills, how to behave, how to maintain, how to uh, maintain your uh, different kind of behaviors, which can be reaching to that level of maintaining of the standard. So another one is the thinking skills. Thinking leads to your um, social skills. Thinking derives towards the social skills. You need to understand in an uh, effective way, these the major core skills are involved for any kind of uh, uh, lifelong learning situation. These are the self-awareness. You need to make yourself more aware and understand and uh, need to uh, inculcate the different types of knowledges. And another may be the um, empathy, need of critical thinking, need of creativity and creative thinking, which is uh, the higher order thinking, we can say, and uh, decision making, which is the part of the leadership position and leadership uh, reflections. And uh, you need to also look into the um, problem solving and interpersonal relationship skills and effective communication make all these skills bonded with each other. That is the more important how you are communicating. That communication is not only the, just the bubble, it may be also the physical communication and communication through different means that effective communication make you to enhance your self-awareness, empathy, and it build your critical thinking and it will leads towards your adequate and appropriate leadership, uh, which is towards the decision-making skills. And it will give you an opportunity to understand towards the problem solving. I'm coming to with this, and this will really help you to, uh, to, to make yourself to coping with your stress and dealing with your emotions. Many times, being an individual, 
in many situations i am not talking about only just for the teaching learning situations because my participants are from diverse uh, diversified areas they are and some of them are business students they may go to the different uh, organizations to work there and they may involve in the any industries they may involve in the any service provider in industries they may they may engage with the many uh, manufacturing industries but the coping with the stress and dealing with the emotions are more important two things while if you are inculcating the life skills which we are discussed the few of them these are the core skills which is more important to manage your life skills and make yourself lifelong learner so in this in this regard i just wanted to uh, share with you not taking much time uh, my friends uh, this commonwealth of learning involved in uh, uh, what is called uh, involved in uh, capacity development of the teachers and uh, leaders and institutional leaders industrial leaders to uh, to to uh, prepare and develop different learning materials while we are developing this learning materials i know that uh, professor kuntal will uh, reflect on more that designing and development of different kind of learning materials however i just uh, uh, let you know how we are maintaining we are more focusing more on that integrated approach that which dealing with the uh, any content development need to leads integratedly inculcate life skills so any course and materials which we are involving with the integrated approach through which the life skills can be reflected in the each and every learning materials and it it can it can it can prepare a base for the learners or the lifelong learners to enhance their Uh, life skills and inculcate their values and uh, with this inculcation of values and content delivery system that can be reflected towards the uh, that uh, managing and maintaining of the different uh, level of our life skills and different types of life skills in their profession so uh, if i will uh, look into the uh, different activities what we used to do to uh, while developing and uh, enhancing the capacity of the individuals and leaders or the teachers for uh, inculcation of the life skills we are we used to go for the group work group work collaborative work constructive work and we are going for the peer teaching process we are uh, arranging for the various discussions we are arranging and uh, collaborating for the different games and we are uh, maintaining for the different uh, type of excursion and moving towards the real time situation where they can understand the life skills can be integrated in the course curricula and curriculum and um, we we are also moving uh, moving towards the uh, different kind of competitions and uh, hackathon programs for the different kind of uh, different institutions and the governments which the, which can be leading to the enhancing of the different types of life skills and leadership skills as well as decision making skills and um, moving step by step to uh, to maintain the sustainability in their particular situation maybe the teacher maybe the students maybe the parents that that sustainability in that particular managing with different kind of situations is more important in the life skills is concerned for this uh, to for enhancing of this um, situation we used to also have various process that any kind of content materials and uh, capacity building program which we are organizing for various faculties and the various uh, school of studies that through the different review processes and uh, coming up with the different reports reports in relation to the teachers perception and uh, leadership's perception and uh, as well as uh, ministries and policy makers perception and combining all these things and going for the discussion 
and to different activities which can be reflecting to enhancing and integrating life skills in their teaching learning process. And uh, uh, without wasting much time, I just wanted to let you know, uh, Semka come out with uh, uh, life skill for engineers course, which is leading to the social engineers, means for, it is meant for the everyone. I would, I would like to inform you that this course, which is based upon the NASCAM report of India, which is telling that 80% you know, of the engineers are, are lacking behind with the skill of uh, uh, employability. So life skills is concerned that which is leading to the employability and employability is more essential for that uh, uh, moving, uh, moving to existing and sustainable yourself for your livelihood. So this course we uh, launched on demand and understanding reviewing of the various situations uh, in collaboration with the University of Hyderabad and uh, tech partner with uh, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. And this course reached more than 75 countries and uh, with uh, uh, 10K uh, participants, they are engineers, non-engineers and uh, social engineers and uh, many, many more. And recently I shared that link and third cycle of this course is open for the enrollment. I wish uh, everybody should enroll to this and uh, Galaxy of Academia is uh, delivering the, their lectures and they are providing the training and case studies to understand and um, inculcate and develop your values and life skills for lifelong learning. So uh, this, is, this is one very important aspect I thought that I would like, I should uh, share with you and uh, um, Recently, I have conducted the study uh, of how this program has uh, improved employability among the learners after completion of this course and uh, moving towards the profession. I found uh, from different uh, experience sharing sessions that uh, it, this course uh, helped the um, engineers and non-engineers to make, make their uh, improving in the more on the leadership skills, as well as uh, I can say that maintaining the different emotions in, in a particular time and showing their emotions in particular time and place. So the professional development uh, in their profession, which is uh, helping them to enhance the leadership positions as well, those who are employed uh, engineers and non-engineers as well. And at the same time, they, they are maintaining the uh, group activities and uh, involving with the group and maintaining the better professional relationship as well as moving towards the better social relationships. This is the findings which we found from this course uh, implementation. And a uh, lot, lot more, uh, Professor Mustafa, no, lot more things we have, which is uh, we can discuss if you will particularly um, ask any questions, we can discuss more initiatives in uh, Commonwealth of Learning and SEMCA, which is special reference to the life skills and uh, value inculcation through different modalities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manas. Uh, it was uh, really excellent because uh, a lot of initiatives are being taken by uh, SEMCA and COAL, especially SEMCA in this uh, vision as uh, the regional center for coal. Uh, and uh, we learned a lot of things from you and uh, hope that uh, we will try to share these links with uh, our students, our colleagues, so that they can uh, just uh, make up these gaps because this is uh, true that uh, this gap is there. The employability skills are very much missing. So this course is very interesting and I attended this course uh, previously also. So the contents are very nice. So uh, now I am moving to Professor Kuntal there. So Professor Kuntal, uh, as I said, that he got some uh, kind of unique experience uh, because uh, he worked with community. He got some uh, model or structure or framework that uh, community engagement, how community engagement or in, uh, involvement can create learning uh, among the people. and which can 
sustain our better livelihood in terms of uh, entrepreneurship, business, or any other kind of uh, uh, abilities. So, uh, Professor Kuntal, uh, can you uh, just uh, to tell uh, something uh, about uh, your experience? If you'd like to focus your experience in developing life skills at community level, so you can do that. Along with that, I will uh, prefer if you uh, just uh, put a, a little light on uh, learning communities, why learning communities are critical for enhancing life skills and how to develop the learning communities. And, and also you can focus briefly on the idea of learning for contextual response, contextual response, because this is very, very important. So whatever we are learning, maybe our contents are very much rigid. We don't uh, improve them regularly, but uh, the, our contents or our teaching learning process sometimes is not responsive to a contextual uh, changes. So how we can do that? And how can this add value to the uh, educational initiatives currently being, currently being undertaken by the educational institutions in India and Bangladesh? So floor is over to you, Professor Kuntal. Um, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Professor Mustafa. And um, thank you, uh, my respected colleagues uh, who have given such a wonderful overview of uh, what's really this world is about and how um, the education today, uh, I think the primary goal for the education framework to fit itself back into the world. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe um, the, that sounds a little harsh, but it's a fact that a large part, if not all, of the education framework that we have seen in the recent past have been kind of, uh, have been walling itself away from the real world. You know, it was operating on various ideal, idealistic situations and perhaps also um, kind of overlook the very fact that the world changes and the change could be very fast to respond to. I mean, uh, one of the examples that I would like to take is that when pandemic struck, most of the schools and colleges, uh, at least in India, because I, I uh, know, struggled for at least about a month or two to adapt to new ways of delivery system so that they could reach to the, the, the learners. Whereas we have, uh, and Professor Panigrahi can, I uh, mean, Dr. Panigrahi will support me. We had open and distance learning going on for how many years now? Um, 20? So it's something that perhaps, um, uh, we have kind of uh, created small watertight boxes in education system that uh, didn't learn from each other or didn't even learn from the real world uh, very often. And that's what um, I think Professor Sharma has uh, in details uh, kind of laid out in front of us, the requirement of change that we are facing today. And the requirement change that's been physically uh, manifested by uh, MOOCs that's been uh, you know, designed and developed by SEMCA and COL. What has happened is uh, what Professor Sharma said that we have created villains in the class rather than heroes. We have focused too much on individualism or individualistic patterns of merit of a student, rather than seeing that a community, a kind of building a community of learners. Now, why I'm saying this is very important that uh, we are living in a world which, um, which has shown that it can change drastically and very fast and pose a problem to our livelihood, our living, our society in many ways. And that's one of the reasons I know for sure that in many parts of the world today, we are talking about critical thinking, problem solving kind of an approach to education. Now, problem solving does not happen alone. If you're a single person, 
of trying to approach a problem or solve a problem. It will never go away. It has to be a community. It has to be a collective effort that um, that has to, you know, kind of attack that problem, find out the resources, and solve it. And that's why I think uh, my firm belief is that we need to go back to creating community of learners, learning communities rather than learning individuals. We need to recalibrate our merit system um, so that we look at um, you know, leadership and all these other issues from very different perspectives. Now, why I'm saying leadership is again, uh, what we mentioned, the contextual response. Uh, I can uh, more or less, I do not remember the website, but there is uh, enough information and data available. Um, how the livelihood options have changed and how almost about 70% of the world population today works in the areas. It could be enterprise, could be job, could be something else, where their professional trainings or their professional learning was completely different. They're working in areas which doesn't have anything to do with their education. I mean, if you really look at the engineering, if you really look at um, management, if you really look at many other such segments, we are not working, a large part of our community is not working based on what they were, um, what they have learned in the formal education system, but what they have learned after that. So there is a lot of people, there are a lot of people people who are already practicing this lifelong learning concept. And I think that's something which becomes even more in focus when we talk about contextual changes, which are becoming so fast, so disruptive. I mean, uh, the background of this whole webinar is of course, pandemic and the post pandemic world. Uh, and only yesterday I was talking to one of my uh, mentees and she was saying that their family had to kind of shift away from the city because um, her father had an issue with her job, with his job. Her mother had an issue with uh, her job uh, because of the pandemic, it's a, a pandemic, etc. Um, I know that um, in my locality, there was uh, there is a person who drove around his um, car delivering books to the children who go to the government school and couldn't access the school during the pandemic, during the lockdown. So people have been innovating ways to reach and to create access and to all that. I mean, um, you, you know very well that Sidulai Swanirvar Sansta in Bangladesh, the board school, the famous board school, They've been reaching the uh, students regularly, even through the through the um, through um, how do I say it um, through the um, you know uh, through their board schools, etc. You have to just give me one minute. I'm so sorry, but somebody rang the bell. I'll just open the door and come back. I'm really sorry for. That. Okay, so let us wait for him. And uh, uh, so dear participants, if uh, you have any question, please uh, keep uh, put your question in the chat box. So by the, uh, so at the end of the like, uh, presentation or talk of Kundal Dev, we will take the questions. Yeah, I'm really very sorry. My sincere apologies, but this is one of the disadvantages when you work from home, perhaps. Um, so anyway, um, uh, what, what I was saying that the life skill and this whole thing of contextual response, it's very important that we look at community learning and learning communities both. The other skill which I see is very important for any children to have today is, to, is the ability to analyze and synthesize and come to a conclusion or take a decision. I think this is very critical because if you are in a context which is completely against you, in a situation which is completely against you, 
how do you respond to that context i think this is becoming a more and more um burning question um last year even before the pandemic i heard from one of my classmates in australia and she was saying that we are struggling with the wildfire all the schools are closed i do not know how to um, you know engage my two girls at home and what they should be doing so she started a completely uh, you know um, on her own she started developing certain kind of skills in them like weaving etc cetera, etc cetera, because she was a designer she's a textile designer some of this quick questions are becoming so big in our lives that we need to look at the education completely differently one of the things that i can see also particularly in countries like ours that there is a disconnect between the formal informal and non formal education system the education space and the environment is shrinking we can give five activity classes to a school child a child who's studying in school but that cannot replace an open field where he can run fall and learn what life skill he has to pick up so somewhere i think it's very important that we start rebuilding our learning environment that's something which i think is replaceable and that's what perhaps would lead to what um, we've been talking about is contextual learning the other thing that i can think of is, is that you know somewhere i have never agreed to the concept of a teacher and uh, if i am talking about today um, a continuous learning process lifelong learning process i imagine a teacher are like a very good librarian and traffic police rolled together the traffic police never drives your car but gives you direction right direction where to go like the librarian perhaps who hasn't read the book but knows exactly which section you need to go to and to access that resource so teachers have to become resource people that means they have to learn uh continually too so that is one of the major major area that um that we have to address which will uh, perhaps allow us to fulfill all the parameters that have been well covered by uh, my other respected colleagues the so resourcing is something which is or sourcing is something very is very important for uh for um to live in today's world to kind of address something which is just emerging because we are talking about a situation which is emerging which which never faced before that's again where i think um community becomes very important because if there is a community then the resources are bigger the variety diversity and the uh, availability of the resources are much larger so that's again i think it's very important that we bring in learning communities in focus we build learning communities who not only learn themselves but share with each other um so that's that's another part and as far as content is concerned i think um one of the ways that we have seen um in today's world is developing of content around content somewhat like um say google map we have or even the the, the travel blogs there are reviews there are all kind of things now textbook will be um kind of uh, a little old by the time it hits the market it takes even a lot of time to produce a textbook so it cannot be updated that clearly so could be online and the second thing is sometimes when we generate the content we are looking at it like you know we have to deliver this content to this target group of course the students 
But to me, I think it's very important that we start integrating the learner developed content for, uh, for our um, you know, learning teaching um, uh, you know, process. Why cannot the peer generated content come into as learning material? Particularly in case of the community level learning, we have seen in many different projects, uh, from, even from COL, we have seen in many different projects that the community developed content is much more contextual, adaptable, and very, very local specific. It has a very strong grounding and reference to the local and immediate environment, my immediate surrounding, and that has worked. So I think that's something which has to come um, to, uh, to develop learning communities and community-driven learning processes. And um, yes, I think um, I wouldn't take much time because everything else is coming um, covered. And only thing that I, I would like to say that, you know, sometimes also perhaps um, we need to categorize in different levels where we need qualifications and where we need abilities. Somewhere this also is getting um, a bit confused because um, I know I have worked with uh, uh, many people and it's not, I'm, when I'm saying qual qualification and abilities, it's not that the person has some, doesn't have some other kind of ability. But just because I have studied management may not make me a good manager. My strength could be somewhere else. I need to find that. So somewhere our education system perhaps need to look at more, a cons more becoming more of a consultative process with the learners, uh, diagnostic process with the abilities and strengths and weaknesses. So it's it kind of, uh, to me, slowly should shift from a teaching learning process to a learning mentoring process. That's, that's what I think is, uh, is the call of the day. So that's, that's one of the things that uh, I can think of uh, hearing all, all my respected colleagues. The other thing that I was thinking of when Professor Sharma said that communication skills, I think Communication skills today, I mean, we live in a hashtag world, uh, but I think somewhere the storytelling has gone missing, which touches my emotion, which touches me as an individual human being. I mean, why should I be sitting in a literature class where there is no storytelling, but it's too analytical, too dry? Same thing happens, you know, all of us were scared about mathematics. But it, 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 very frankly, I mean, uh, I uh, liked physics, not because of the physics textbook, but there is a book called Physics for Entertainment by Y.E.A. Perelman. That was storytelling about physics. That intrigued my questions. Uh, that triggered my question. I think that's something which we are all looking at. The questioning ability of the student, analysis ability of the student. Yeah, so I think uh, that's where I would stop. There are many things that we need to do, but yes, we require a quantum leap in our approach and not necessarily in our framework, but we need to start seeing that framework from a different perspective. So employability is not about a job anymore, but employability is also about self-employment and developing an enterprise. I mean, we are always talking about creating more. So some of these things we perhaps need to relook at and redefine uh, from our side. So that's, that's what my perspective is. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to kind of talk. And I'm sorry, I didn't prepare anything, but I, I was li listening to what uh, my colleagues have said, and I just wanted to, bring in my thought process into that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kunkal Day. Uh, it was really nice. So we almost have uh, the end of the webinar. So we will take a few questions because uh, some questions came into the chat box. The, the first one is, uh, uh, it has been asked by Dr. Poonam. Uh, I think the question is, uh, she wants to know uh, the focus on essential life skills needed for women empowerment. So what kind of life skills are essential for women empowerment? I think it's better to go to uh, uh, Madam to, to respond because uh, so Professor Sharos Sharma, Madam, uh, you can respond to this question. So what kind of uh, life, essential life skills required for women empowerment? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. And it is a very uh, good question. Women empowerment, uh, when I see uh, in a larger frame, we are empowered a lot in terms of uh, better resistance, which nature has given to us. We are giving life to a newborn. This is the power we are having naturally. But in a modern times, when we talk about kind of women empowerment, I think women is everywhere, but the kind of glass ceiling is seen in several corporate and the wages which we are not getting in the unorganized sector, that is also a concern. But yes, the, the scenario is not that depressing. There are certain skills, where, whether it is in agriculture, horticulture, um, there are certain professional uh, skills where women are getting uh, more and more, they are coming into the field and yes, they are giving good results, uh, results too. So today's uh, day is uh, very much of vocational skills. A woman must know how to be professionally uh, empowered and these professions will give, uh, give her monetary support also. So there are various areas when women can uh, embark and yes, um, give a good income to her and also in the family teaching is there, various vocational skills are there, medical profession, various professionals are there, even in defense, women are coming up. So scenario is being changed and we have to have much confidence to embark in different unsearched areas, unembarked areas, and there we can succeed because we have a strong willpower. Thank you very much, Madam, uh, for a nice explanation and feedback. Uh, so another question is uh, from uh, Mr. Habibur Rahman. Uh, he asked, uh, he needs to know or wants to know uh, the employability education or employability skills in that in relation to material gain accomplishment and uh, spiritual intelligence. So he wants to know the employability or employment education, uh, how it is related to or how it can uh, incorporate the uh, material gain accomplishment as well as the, the spiritual uh, accomplishment. So I think uh, we can go to Dr. Manash Panagrahi if you can respond a little, and then I'll move to Kuntal Day uh, for the rest of the question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is this is really a uh, question which is expected, and uh, we always uh, get this kind of question. And if I will refer to uh, Dr. Kunal, uh, Kuntal Day, uh, in, in his uh, talk, he has already mentioned that a little bit about the employability. And uh, employability, it, uh, if I will reflect to our experiences, and uh, this is the employability skills are, uh, this is the, this is, I can say that this is, this is not skill. This is the uh, output outcome of the different life skills. And uh, sustainable, uh, sustainability in the uh, uh, enhancing your employability, employability not just uh, reflecting towards the uh, joining any other organization, but also it can be reflecting towards the how you are make your own startups and uh, you, how you are engaging yourself to, uh, uh, to enhance these skill, uh, existing life skills and how you are using your this life skills to enhance your employability. This is, this is the, there are two things which we need to discuss. 
And um, if, if I will look into this one, very simple example, I would like to say, we, uh, if you will go to the spirituality things, if you are talking about the spiritualism, spirituality things, this is, this is what is spiritual. This is nothing just a way of life. And the life skills we are, what we are adopting in the context and from the community and from the society, and that we are reflecting towards our day-to-day -day life. And uh, our, we are living our life with happily. So that, that um, creation of the happiness, which is, which is making you to uh, and your livelihood, which can give you an opportunity to uh, reflect towards the spirituality, right? So um, what I, I believe that from our different experiences, these, these um, uh, lifelong learning and um, life skills, it goes parallelly and we need to uh, enhance these life skills for lifelong learning to make ourselves sustainable. Sustainable in what concern? Not only just for the uh, getting uh, getting your livelihood, but also uh, after getting your livelihood, making others to get into the um, uh, this sigma, and uh, you need to maintain your uh, what is called uh, ability in the in the sim same livelihood, providing to the other interest group and creating an environment within the community so that people will learn from you and make themselves become sustainable through different uh, so this is this is all about the spirituality spirituality i don't believe that uh, something you can worship and something you can uh, uh, which which is we we particularly uh, uh, southeast asian countries uh, moving towards but i believe that spirituality in different connotation which we need to you need to uh, worship to what you love what you find comfortable in your surrounding what you uh, what you really manage and make beautification in your surrounding that i think this is the spirituality which is can give you the opportunity to uh, earn your life skills and uh, moving towards in that way for, from my side, this is uh, the thing which, uh, which if you will look into the different materials and uh, yeah, if, you, can, you, can, you can see the example of while I'm talking about the uh, content development in Bangladesh and content development in uh, particularly in India are the same movement when I'm moving towards the content development in uh, UK and US. So things are completely different and it is completely contextualized to that particular environment. So uh, this, is, this, is, this is what we uh, believe. It can be accomplished and uh, it can be uh, uh, make through practice and training and retraining and moving towards uh, uh, implementing in your own life to generate more uh, vibrant towards the uh, uh, happy uh, happiness uh, society and happiness well-being and involving the community and community uh, community engaging for the uh, available learning materials as well as contextualize these material materials to enhance your life skills accordingly over to you uh, so thank you uh, dr manash uh, uh, professor kuntal uh, is just can you add something uh, uh, linking with this question? Uh, for example, so the, the question was uh, how we can just connect uh, this kind of uh, lifelong learning and uh, this life skills with the well-being and the happiness uh, of the societies and communities. So you were talking about uh, community learning instead of uh, the individual learning, uh, learning individuals. So how you can connect this community learning uh, or uh, contextualized learning with this kind of uh, uh, stability in the society in terms of happiness, uh, spiritual well-being, or whatever it is, uh, some kind of social skills, spiritual skills, emotional skills. So how this can be connected with the stability of the society? Uh, thank you, Mustafa. I, I think, you know, um, it's, uh, 
if we really look at um, community learning, it kind of serves as an answer or provides an answer to most of the questions that we'll ask even in the coming future. Um, for that reason, I'm just going a little back uh, to Dr. Poonam Tiwari's question, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, how can we empower women through learning? Now, my question would be, what kind of life skill do you need to really give to men so that they can accept women's role in the society and uh, clear the path of empowerment? So that's where community learning comes into picture. It's not about training women in life skills. It's about training the community that has both men and women in life skills. I think that's, that's something which is very, very important. Coming to spiritualism and all that, I think, um, yes, um, A, we need to redefine employability to kind of see what kind of spirituality really we, we are looking for. Uh, and also I think the spiritualism changes from one context to another. Sometimes it's about finding peace, but if I really look at the resource distribution among poor and rich in the world, I would say today's spiritualism should uh, just highlight one point, <coughs> sorry, that is, I'm not going to take more than what makes me satisfied. So it's, it's uh, you know, I, I just do, um, I always say this when I, um, when somebody asks me that, how do we develop curriculum? I say, always say that um, uh, Buddha has demonstrated it. He traveled, he found out what his position in the society, his coordinates, his surrounding, what's happening in the society. That's the first step of education. So that I know where I am and how far I have to go. Then I introspect, I attain enlightenment, say, enlightenment saying that, okay, this is what my capability is and this is where I can serve uh, other people, the society, or uh, even go for a job. Then we come to something called Dhamma, which is basically practice, practice, and practice. And then finally, you come to Sangha, which is organization, which is again building the community from your learning. I think this is the biggest spirituality in, in uh, um, education system that should be um, kind of embedded to in. First, can the learner pinpoint his or her coordinates where they are? and how far they have to go. You know, there was a, a social media cartoon that was doing round about a year back that some examiner is asking an elephant, a monkey, a fish, and, um, and a bird saying, climb this tree, that's your examination. Now, the moment we start saying that, no, the learners coordinate are here, will stop even that kind of a standardized examination system. We'll come to a diagnostic system. So that's, I think, is the biggest spirituality that we need to know. We need to know ourselves, what our capabilities are, what our weaknesses, and what can we share with others. So today's context, I think I would say this is the biggest spirituality that is required for employability. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kuntal Day. And uh, we are uh, already at the end of the webinar. So, uh, uh, Professor Nojrul uh, Islam, uh, sir, are you connected? Uh, so we can uh, just listen to you a few words. If you have something to say on these uh, issues in one or two minutes. I think uh, you may be away. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, for to uh, all the participants and uh, panelists, especially the keynote speaker, uh, Professor uh, uh, Sharma. Uh, so uh, the other speakers, including uh, Dr. Nodrul Islam, uh, Dr. Manash Panigrahi and uh, Professor Kuntal Day. So you covered a lot of issues and it is a kind of unique uh, type of discussion what I found, uh, especially focusing on life skills and value education. 
uh, in uh, 21st century skills. So uh, I must thank uh, all the speakers and uh, the participants once again. And I'm, I'm very much thankful to uh, uh, Chonchul Ji. Uh, Mr. Chonchul, he uh, coordinated the whole process for last uh, 15 days. He was uh, just uh, several times, he talked to me and uh, tried to uh, uh, write me uh, in arranging this kind of webinar and connecting with these uh, uh, speakers. And it was really helpful and he's, uh, he smartly did it. And it was, uh, it made my work very easy to arrange this kind of international workshops. This is kind of uh, a very uh, widely circulated workshop uh, and webinar. So that's why uh, his support was uh, highly needed from the beginning and he did it, he successfully did it. And uh, also I must be thankful to Nabin Bhatia so he, uh, for his uh, technical support and arranging all these things so smoothly today, uh, this program is live on uh, YouTube and uh, this uh, webinar was uh, totally uninterrupted. So it is uh, a excellent skill he uh, uh, extended to this kind of uh, arrangement. So again, thanks uh, Navinzi for this kind of support. And I must uh, uh, mention that, uh, uh, the we got Professor Shar uh, Sharma uh, in this kind of open business talk. This is a kind of uh, unique opportunity for Bangladesh Open University. So uh, we must uh, be thankful to you from the School of Business and Bangladesh Open University for uh, accepting this kind of uh, invitation. And also we are thankful to uh, Dr. Nazul Islam, Dr. Manash and Dr. Kuntal De for accepting uh, this kind of uh, invitation and for this important talk. I hope that uh, we will get you in near future in this kind of uh, arrangement of uh, the open, uh, under the open business talk uh, arranged by uh, School of Business and Bangladesh Open University. We are looking for a lot of more collaboration with uh, National uh, Institute for Open Schooling. Uh, it will uh, benefit both the side, Bangladesh Open University and uh, of course NEOS because we are, uh, we've got a long standing relationship and uh, we learn from each other. I think under the leadership of uh, uh, Professor Sharad Sharma, this kind of bondage will be strengthened more and we will uh, be connected uh, in this kind of uh, discussion so that uh, all the colleagues of, from Bangladesh, India and other areas will be benefited. So yeah, thanks again for, uh, yeah. So if uh, Professor Sharad Sharma, uh, Madam, if you have something to say, so we will close uh, this session by your talks. Looking forward, sir, for the further association in more constructive way. Thank you very much. So thank you, madam. So uh, so by uh, saying thanks to everybody once again, uh, we are closing the sessions here. Thank you very much for your attentive participation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank Kuntal. you. Thank you, Dr. Manash. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.